In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural stylized water caustics material in Blender. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description. Now this is just a water caustics material, it's not real water caustics, but if you want to learn how to render real water caustics in Blender, then I recently created a video on that, so I'll have a link in the description to that video if you want to check it out. So after I show you how to create this procedural material, we'll be joined together into this custom nude group so you can customize the look of the material. So there is a scale value to change the size of the entire material, so you can change this depending on the size of your object. Then there's also this animate value, so you can animate this value. You can see here it is what it looks like when it's animated, so you can animate the water caustics moving. Then we have the caustic scale, this will be just the size of the caustics, and then also we have this detail level for the caustics. So I like to keep the detail pretty low, but you could turn up a bit if you want a bit more detail. And then we have the watercolor, so since this is stylized I'm making sure it's like very blue. And then we also have the caustics color which is white. Then we have the noise scale so you can make it look more noisy. We also have the detail level for the noise and then also roughness value for the noise. Then we have a distortion value so you can make it less distorted or more distorted. And then we also have the caustics visibility, so if you want to just turn that down or make the caustics less visible you can just turn that down. And then we have the water transmission, so you can see if I turn this all the way up, it's more transparent. If I turn it down, it's not really see-through at all. Then we have the material transparency, so if you just wanna make it more transparent, you can do that. Then we have the roughness of the material, and then finally, the bump strength, which is just a little bit of bump over the surface. So if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description. And you can also check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So now I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I just added an icosphere and right behind me on the add icosphere settings I turned the subdivisions up to 6 so it is nice and smooth and round and I'll just shade the object smooth. Then I'll scale the object down by 0.2 so type 0.2, hit Control A and apply the scale. Then I also just added a camera and just pointed the camera at the object. And if you go to the output properties, I set it to a square image, so 1920 by 1920. Let's go into the rendered viewport mode, and I'm going to be using the Cycles rendering engine, but you could use Eevee if you want to, but I do think the material looks better in Cycles. Now for the lighting, I added this sunlight here, so you can just go to the add menu, just go to light and add a sunlight. And then if you click here to go to the object data properties, I turned the sunlight strength up to 10, so it's pretty bright. And then also right over here on the world properties, I added in this autumn field pure sky HDRI from polyhaven.com. So link will be in the description and I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color and you can choose environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And I turned the strength of the HDRI down to a 0.5 so it wasn't quite as bright. That'll give some nice lighting and realistic reflections. Now also on the render properties, let's scroll down here and I'm gonna use the color management of Filmic and the look to very high contrast. And then also if we open up the Film tab, let's check mark the transparent button so you can't see the HDRI in the background, but it'll still light the scene. But that is of course optional, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So I'm in the shading workspace, so I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered view. And then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'm gonna select the object and I'll add a new material. And I'll just rename this material to stylized water caustics. And then I'm also going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on in the video, so if you don't have it enabled, you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and then here in the user preferences, go to add-ons, and you can search for Node, and just enable the Node Wrangler add-on. So the first thing that I want to do is add a Voronoi texture to create the caustics look. So we're going to add the Voronoi, and let's control shift select it to preview it, and then with the Voronoi selected, I'll hit control T, and that's going to add the texture coordinate mapping nodes, and that's using the Node Wrangler add-on. And let's use the object coordinates, so we'll put the object into the vector. And now I'll change some of the Voronoi settings so it has the kind of texture of water caustics. So I'm going to change the 3D to 40, and that way we'll have this W value which we can animate to kind of animate the caustics kind of randomly moving around. Then I'm going to take the F1 and change it to smooth F1. Then I'll turn the scale to a 25. We're going to leave the W value at zero, and I'm going to leave the detail at zero, and I'm also going to leave all the other settings how they are. So let's select the Voronoi and hit Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate the node but keep the wire plugged up. And let's preview the Voronoi. Now for this one, I'm going to take the smooth F1 and just turn it to F1. So you can see we now have this texture and this texture. 
So I want to mix them together. So I'm going to search for a mix color node, drop this here, and I'm going to put the top distance into color A and the bottom distance into color B. Then here on the mix type, I'm going to change this to difference. So when I change this to difference, let's take the factor and turn it all the way up to one. So it adds both of them together. You can see we now have kind of a cool cell shape and it looks like water cost. Now I also want to distort it a little bit so it just looks a bit more random. So I'm going to select the texture coordinate mapping and drag them back here and I'm going to add some textures in here to distort it. So I'm going to add a noise texture and drop it here and let's plug the factor up to the vector and the factor up to the vector of this one. So now the noise texture is going through the vector so the noise texture is going to distort the Voronoise. But I want to make it less strong so let's search for a mix color. We'll drop the mix color after the noise and we'll put the result of the mix colors into both vectors. So now this factor from the noise is going to go into color B and then this mapping which isn't distorted, this is just the original object coordinates, that's going to go into color A. Now in the mix type here I'm going to change this to the linear light. And now what I can do is drag the factor and you can see as I turn up more and more it's going to distort it. So let's just turn the factor to a 0.1 and then we can change a few of the noise texture settings. So I'll turn the scale to 4, I'll also turn the detail to 4, and I'll turn the roughness up to a 0.6. So now you can see it just looks a little bit wavy, kind of random and distorted, so that looks a bit better. So let's just box select these nodes, kind of drag them together here, just to compress the node setup so it's a little bit more neat. Now later on in the custom node group, I want to be able to animate this W value to kind of randomize and kind of add an animated value to kind of animate the caustics. So I want to animate this value and this value at once. So what I'm going to do is add a math node, We'll drop this here, and I can put the value into the top one, and then this value into the bottom one. So put them into both W values. So we now have this one single value that we can use, and that's going to change both of them at once, so the texture looks correct. Now the other reason I'm also using the math node here is because you can see when I drag this around, everything moves around really quickly and it's kind of moving too fast. So I'm going to take the add and turn it to a multiply, and then I'll turn the bottom value to a 0 0.01, and then the top value is going to be 0. So we're multiplying this by 0 0.01, so it has a very small value. So now when I drag this, you can see it's going to be a lot more sensitive. You can also hold down the shift key as you're dragging this around to make it more sensitive, but you can see it's going to be more sensitive, so that's how we can kind of animate the water cost. So now what I want to do is add some custom colors. So what I'm going to do is search for a color ramp to make it more contrasted. So we'll drop this here and I'm going to drag the black tab over a little bit, but then drag the white tab over a lot more to so maybe about there. And then to add the custom colors, I can add a mix color and drop it here after the color ramp. Let's just drag these back and I can put the result into the base color and let's just control shift select the principal shader. So now here on the mix, we want to take the color and color and put that into the factor. And so now we can make the two colors for A and B. So for color A, I'm going to make it like a bluish color, a light blue, and then color B is just going to be fully white. And you can drag these around to make it more contrasted. And if you want to use the same hex value for color A, the hex value is this here. So you can punch this in. It's 0, 0, B, 0, F, F, FF. You can punch that into the hex value of color A if you want to use the same color, and color B is just fully white. Now let's also turn the roughness down to like a 0.1 so it is a lot more shiny. And then we can also open up the transmission here and you can see if I turn up the transmission it's going to look a lot more like water and it's going to be more see-through. But what I want to do is have the water be really see-through and then the white part where the caustics are to not be that see-through. So what I'm going to do is take this difference here which has the water caustics texture and we're going to put this into the transmission weight and I'll just preview the shader. Now I want to change the colors so I'll duplicate the color ramp and drop it here. So before the weight here, and then I'm going to drag the black tab over here and the white tab over here to switch them. And now I can just kind of drag these together. So I'll actually put the white tab over here, and then the black tab I'll put almost halfway just like that. So you can now see that the transmission is really strong right there, kind of around those bluer areas. But then where it's white, it's a lot more see-through. Because if the transmission weight just turned to one, you can't really see the water caustics that well. So the parts here where the white is, it's not going to have the transmission. Now what I also want to do is control the these values in the custom node group. So what I'm going to do is search for a hue saturation value and drop this before the color ramp and then duplicate it and drop it after the color ramp. So we have two different hue saturation values. So you can see if I drag the first one around, it's kind of making it more visible and less visible. Whereas if I drag the second value around, that is just kind of getting rid of all of it and also making it more thin. So this one here can be used to control the water transmission, and this one here can be used to control the caustics visibility. Now what I also want to do is add a little bit of surface bump, so what we're going to do is search for a noise texture, drop this down here, and I want to use the object coordinate, so let's take the mapping vector, put that into the vector the noise, 
And on the 3D here, I'm also gonna turn this to 40, and that way we'll have this W value to kind of animate the noise. So let's take the noise factor and put it into the normal, but then to convert it to proper bump data or normal data, we need to search for a bump node and drop this here between the noise and the principal shader, and the factor needs to go into the height value of the bump. And then we can take the distance value and turn it down to like a point zero zero eight so it's very subtle but if you kind of look here you can see there is just a little bit of bump it's a little bit hard to see though because we need to change the noise settings so what i'm going to do is turn the scale to a 13.5 so it's quite a bit bigger and then also we'll turn the detail to a 2.3 but i don't want to add that much detail i just want to look make it look like bumpy water and then i'll turn the roughness up to a 0.8 so if I control shift select the bump here, you can see what the bump is doing. So it just looks like little ripples of water. So let's just preview the principal shader. Now what I also wanna do is take this W value and I wanna put the W value here into the multiply. And that way this top value is gonna also animate that ripple. So you can kind of see there in the reflections, if I zoom in here, if I animate this, it's kind of adding that little kind of rippling effect because it's moving the noise. So now let's join this together into a custom node group. So I'm going to box select all the nodes except the material output, and I'll hit control G to join together into a node group. And I'll hit the tab key to go outside the node group. Let's drag the node group right over here. And I'm gonna copy the material name and I'm gonna paste the material name there in the node group and drag it out so it's a bit bigger. So now let's hit tab to go into the node group and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And if I go to the group tabs, I'm gonna click on the group socket. I'm gonna double click on this to rename it and I'll just rename it to shader because I like that better. So now I can take this group input right over here and I can plug up all the values to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So I first want to control the overall scale. So the mapping is plugged up to all the textures. So we can take the scale and put that into the extra socket to control the scale. Now, if I click on the scale, you can see it is three different values, but I just want it to be one value. So let's click on the type here. And instead of vector, we're going to use float. I need to turn the default value back to one because it was set to zero and then the texture is still gone That's because I need to go out of the node group and turn the scale back to one So that'll change the size of the entire material So we'll go back into the node group and the next value that I want to add is the animate value So we can take the top multiply value and we can put that into the extra socket And I'll just rename this to animate value then I want to control just the caustic scale So if I drag the input closer here, so it's easier to work with we have these two Voronoi scales and they both have scale values. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket and then this scale is gonna go into the same exact socket. And I'll rename this one right here to caustics scale. Then I wanna do pretty much the same thing but for the detail values. So I'll put the detail into the extra socket and then this other detail, we'll put that into the same socket. And this one I'll rename to caustics detail. Then I want to control the colors, so I'll drag the group input right over here next to the mix color, and I can put color A and color B into the extra sockets. So color A is going to be the water color, and then color B is going to be the caustics color. Then I want to control the noise settings, so I'll drag the group input right back here. And I want to take the scale and the detail and the roughness and put those all into the extra sockets. And then I'm just going to rename this to noise scale, noise detail, and also noise roughness. And then to control the distortion, we can use this factor here. So we'll put the linear light factor into the extra socket, and I'll just call that distortion. Then I want to control the caustics visibility. So if I drag the input down here, we have the first hue saturation value. And so if I change the value, it's going to make it lighter and darker. So that'll show the caustics or hide the caustics. So I'll put the value into the extra socket and I'll just rename this to caustics visibility. Then I want to control the water transmission. So the second hue saturation value is going to make it all transmission or no transmission. So I'll put the value into the extra socket and I'll just rename this to water transmission. And then I also want to take the alpha here from the principal shader and put that into the extra socket. And we'll rename this to material transparency, just in case you want to make the entire thing more transparent. Then let's also control the roughness. So we'll put the principled shader roughness into the extra socket. And then I finally want to control the bump strength. So let's take this bump strength here and put that to the extra socket. And I can double click on the bottom value and just call that bump strength. So we'll hit the N key to close the side panel. I'll drag the group input right back there. And I can hit the tab key to go outside the node group. And now we have a nice customizable node group to control the material. So I'll just review the material. So we have the scale of the material. You can also use this animate value. Then we also have the caustics scale. We also just have the detail of the caustics. And then we have the watercolor 
and also the caustics color. And then we have the noise scale, we have noise detail and noise roughness. We then have a distortion value. We have the caustics visibility. We have the water transmission. We have the material transparency. We also have the roughness of the water. And then finally, we have the bump strength. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can purchase it with the links in the video description. You can also check out my Ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. And you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. And also, if you do want to learn how to create real water caustics where light is shining down through the water and then there's like the water caustics on the bottom of the pool then i do have a tutorial on how to create water caustics in blender so link will be in the description to that video so i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching